Hi, welcome. And uh, just want to share some thoughts with you this morning about building a history with God and uh, really looking at prayer and how we build a history with God through prayer. You see, um, I can go back many years to when our children were very small and we used to have a series of very unreliable cars and uh, almost everyone seemed to break down at some point or another and we used to still go out on very long journeys, whatever. There was one particular time I remember when we had a holiday in the Netherlands. We'd swapped houses with a couple in the Netherlands that we'd never met who were going to come and stay in our house so that, and uh, we were going to go and stay in theirs. And we, the plan was that we would drive down to the port and pick the ferry up and go across and drive through to the Netherlands, through France and Belgium and so on. And uh, so that was fine, apart from this particular car had a, an issue with getting overheated and if it did so, if it was in a traffic jam, it would then shut down and not start at all for quite a long time anyway. And uh, we, so we just duly loaded the car up with five children, all the luggage and everything you needed for two weeks away and drove down to the ferry port. Fortunately, it was an early morning sailing, so we drove overnight, which was great because no traffic jams, no problem. But of course, when we got down to the port, there was a great line of cars waiting to get on to the, to the boat. And uh, our car stood in line. And of course, we watched as the temperature gauge went up and it but cut out, died, end of. And uh, we had to be dragged on unceremoniously by a sort of tractor and the guy said to us, do you want to continue your holiday? And we said, yeah, 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 we'll continue. Not even sure where the car would start again when the ferry got to France. But hey, we had a great two weeks. We drove around everywhere, no problem at all. Um, and a great time. But why do I tell that story? I tell it because our children got used to the fact that very often they'd be sitting in the car. The, uh, I'd try to get it started and it wouldn't start. And the message would go out, children, let's, let's pray because the car's not starting. And uh, they pray and very often it would start. And the times when it didn't, we saw God get us out of uh, all sorts of situations. And that's another story. But it's building that history in prayer. And um, it's something that I think our children learn a lot about prayer as we did that. And... Uh, we learn about prayer in the middle of ordinary life and things that happen is as we bring every situation before God, we build up this history with him. And I thought to myself, you know, why talk about prayer? I'd never seen myself as an expert on prayer. But then I thought, well, who is? Because nobody is, because it's about relationship. And uh, you develop over time a relationship with God and you build up a history. So... One of the things I thought about is what makes prayer hard, and it shouldn't be hard, but we make it hard, is because one, we forget how big God is, and secondly, we forget how much he loves us. I know Elizabeth spoke about how big God is last week, so I'm not gonna say much about that, but also that he loves us. And also, we put barriers in the way. We have things like fear and guilt that gets in the way. Ever been in that situation where, you know, you sort of, feel that uh, you don't feel good enough to pray so you've not gone to pray for pray for a while and then because you haven't prayed for a while you feel guilty so then you still feel not guilty enough to go and pray so you don't pray and so it goes on i think we've all been there and uh, we have to understand also that at certain times because we're human and we get under time pressures and we get into situations and stress and whatever there are times when it's easier to pray than at other times and i think Sometimes we have to be easy on ourselves. That doesn't mean don't pray, but it does mean be gentle on yourself because God is gentle on you. So I want to share some thoughts with you about prayer that help me. Um, some of these might be very basic to you, but I hope that they'll help some of you anyway. And just, we need to hear some things again and be reminded, I think. So number one, God is much bigger than I can imagine. You know, as I read the Bible, um, I just begin to realize more and more just how big God is and it increases my faith in prayer you know I mean God there's a sense in which God doesn't need us because he is God and he wouldn't be God if he needed something but he does want us he wants a relationship with us 
and you're spending that time with him. Have you ever been in that situation, perhaps you're a mother and you've been trying to cook something in the kitchen and you know one of your children wants to help and you know it's going to be much quicker and less messy if they don't. But of course you let them because, you know, at, certainly sometimes anyway, because that's about relationship. It's the same as I've been in situations where the children have wanted to help carry something and uh, you know you can do it on your own and you know they're too small to help much and it slows you down but you want that relationship well God's like that he wants that time with you and you know I speak to God anywhere anytime whatever doesn't matter but the idea of a place and a time where you meet with God is very very helpful the Celts had a Celtic Christianity had a, a view of thin places and we can almost create our own thin places in our home when uh, the children were very young I used to get up early in the morning um, when the house was quiet and all at rest and peace and I used to take a cup of tea and sit in a particular place and and that was my place of prayer and they were valuable times out of the busyness of life because I knew straight away things were going to hit and we were going to be off being busy and all sorts of things happening but that time with God was precious um, and you know what even now the depth of God's love still continues to overwhelm me and that gives me faith in prayer I am um, I've just been doing a Bible study not long ago on uh, it's Luke chapter 7 and the woman who goes into the house of Simon the Pharisee she's obviously a prostitute it would seem and she's gone in there and uh, the whole way that Jesus deals with her in that situation with all those men with the Pharisees around and so on the love and compassion he showed to her reminds me of the love and compassion Jesus has on us even when we blow it and we get it wrong it's amazing. Um, I find too, another point, that worship brings me into his presence. Um, sometimes just, oh, that's as far as I'll get. I'll put some worship music on, I'll just be worshipping him. And I don't move on perhaps to something else. I can do my praying at uh, other times. I go about other things, praying for situations and so on. Sometimes I do. But we have to have variety in there, I think. And worship brings us into that place of intimacy with God. It's good to sometimes just come and just sit and wait before you start praying anything or doing anything. Because we need to just focus on God and get into that place with him. Because um, prayer, you know, life is so busy, isn't it? My other point, I'll go down to point five, but who's counting? But prayer shouldn't be religious at all. Um, we just tell him how we, how we feel about things, you know? It doesn't have to be the right words. God looks at the heart. I used to think I couldn't pray properly because I couldn't use some of the words that other people used years ago. It would shut me up in, in public prayer meetings. But now I realise it's about the heart. God doesn't care what words you use. He cares. Is your heart for him. Um, we cannot follow some sort of formula and think that's the way it should be and that's the way it works. There's an a amusing story about John Wimber, who uh, was one of the early pioneers of the healing movement. And uh, when they prayed for people, they used to just place their hands just over the top of somebody's head, not on them and not actually touch them and pray for them and that became a thing so everybody would copy that so lots of churches you'd see years ago you know they pray for people and not put their hands on their head or anything just have it hovering there sort of thing and uh, somebody spoke to John Wimber about this once and said well why do you do that you know and he said oh that's because we meet in a school hall um, it was in America he said it's really hot very sweaty in there people don't want our hands plastered on them so we just put our hands over the, the top is it funny people just copied it they thought that would bring God's presence better than anything else there is no formulas there's only relationship I've tried formulas they don't work okay um, and of course we listen to God isn't that great that we can listen to God uh, we are his sheep and we can hear his voice and we can panic that we're not going to hear him but if we wait he will he will speak to us and he'll guide us in how we pray and what we should do it's great that we have somebody we can come into the presence of God as a relationship 
not just trotting out words and so on. I also find praying the scriptures is helpful at times. Of Some of the Psalms I just love, you know, if God highlights that Psalm to me, um, Elizabeth and I have been looking at a chapter in Jeremiah as well recently there's just things God highlights you think that is for this season this that's for this moment and I'm going to pray that back to him and I'm going to you know I know I'm not David I'm not in that situation but I there's something about this that speaks to my heart and now I can pray that back to God and linked to that is also just confessing the word out loud just confessing there's so much negativity about and we can be so negative about ourselves can't we but God's word says good things about us, to confess out loud to God who he is and who we are in him. That builds us up, increases our faith, and is such a blessing. You know, when Moses died, uh, God gave Joshua the assignment that Moses had, a massive assignment, and Joshua was obviously quite concerned, fearful, you know, sort of rather pressured by this. How am I going to do this? I cannot lead this people, I cannot do this thing. And in Joshua chapter 1, God gives him some good advice. I'll just read it to you. It says this, starting at uh, verse, I'll do it from verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You'll make your way prosperous and you'll have success. That sounds good, doesn't it? Um, and what has he said? He said this, he said three key things. He said the law of God was to be in his mouth. He needed to know what was in the word, what was God's heart, what was the what was God saying? Secondly, he was to meditate on it day and night. It was going to, it should be his food. It should be the thing he focuses on. And he was to do all that he was meditating on. God wants us to put into effect what he asks us to do. And uh, that word meditate means to me offer, uh, sorry, to utter, to ponder, to muse, to declare, and even sing over yourself. So it's powerful when we speak out what God says about us and we even we can sing it out, whatever, but we just get it out there and so on. And it's in the small everyday prayers that we build up confidence in God. I think it's lots and lots of small things. You build that history with God and then you have faith for the bigger ones. You know, God just loves to be with us. Recently we had a, a family gathering, a socially distanced one, I want you to know. And uh, at one point my granddaughter and I sat on the grass away from the others and she just was talking to me about the things that were on her heart she just young little girl just sharing her heart with her granddad and uh, you know it were all those things vitally important to the running of the world no they weren't were they deep political things to discuss of course they weren't but I wouldn't want to be anywhere else or talking to anyone else at that time than talking to my granddaughter then because I was spending quality time with her. Do you know, do you think Jesus is any different than that? He just wants to spend that quality time with us. He can handle the situations we've got, but he will sit and he will listen and whatever they are, however big or small they are, he just wants to spend that time with us, you know? And, uh, it's good just to sit with him and chat about things. Revelation talks about gathering our prayers into a bowl. I wonder how many of those little prayers are in that bowl that makes a big difference. So let's build our history with God. Let's um, put everything before him, every situation, and ignore those lies that say he wouldn't be interested. He is interested in you. And all he wants to do is just sit with us and spend time with his children. Bless you.